In this lecture, we are going to be looking at recursive function in PHP. I'll be using a very familiar example. This is the same example that we used when I taught you about multi-dimensional array, how to loop through the value of multi-dimensional array. And if you remember, we had a problem with this code because the for each loop that we have here actually loops through the student's array, checks if the value here is an array. If it is an array, then it's going to do another for each loop. Okay, so that is two label depth. But here we have an array with score collection, and then one of the elements of collection is also an array. So this can actually continue and continue like that. Another element of this element could also be an array. So in order to solve this, uh, let me show you the output again so that you see. See here, notice array to string conversion on line 17. And then I told you I was going to show you how to solve this problem. So the way that we solve this problem is by using recursion because you cannot imagine here we do another for each and then we do another for each. We are not even sure of the depth of this array. We don't know how many depth it's going to have here. So the best solution is not to keep writing for each. We need to use recursion. Recursion is simply when you call a function inside of itself. So that means a function calling itself is what recursion means. So I'm going to show you how this looks in code. It's very simple. We are going to do just little modification here so that we still get to use this code. So I'm going to take this and then call this function array epa. So this is going to take an array. So let's say it takes an array of students or anything. Let's call this an array. And then we are going to paste our for each loop inside of here. So I'm going to replace students with array. All right, at this level, stay pretty basic. Everything that you know before stays the same. The only thing that has changed is that the for each block that you know before is now moved inside of a function called array epa. And I've just renamed the arguments to be array instead of student. This way it doesn't confuse you. Okay, so the part that we actually want to deal with now is from this ul on line 18 to the ul on line 22. So instead of us doing the for each loop again here, we want to call this function again, passing its value, right? So I'm going to get rid of all of this, then also get rid of this. We're just going to say array epa and then pass its value. All right, so what we have done now is make use of recursion in PHP. So instead of us doing for each, whenever the value of an array is an array, we're just going to call this function again. All right, so I'm going to have to move this in, move this inside of the function, and then also move this in. All right, so the reason why I need to move this in is at this point, when I call this function again, it is going to create an unordered list here. Right, so it's going to create another UL here. Previously, we were doing this manually, say echo UL, then before we do another for each again. But now it is just going to call this function again, repeat all of this process again for us automatically. So no matter the depth of this array, it is actually going to end up displaying all the value correctly without any error. All right, so now that we have defined our function, array epa, and then we are calling this function inside of itself, which is called recursion, we're going to go over to our template. And here inside of this PHP block, we're just going to call that function and then pass it to the student array. All right, so let's refresh again. Then notice we are trying to solve this, okay? So when we do a refresh, it says undefined variable student inside of our template. All right, so let's go over to the code and see. All right, so the array is actually student. So we can come here and say student. Let's refresh again, see? All right, so now we are actually able to loop through that multi-dimensional array and display all the values correctly. So no matter the depth of this array students 
Using this recursive function, we can actually loop through it continuously until it reads all the values inside of the array. To wrap up this lecture, we are going to create another function which is going to flatten an array, depending on how we want to flatten the array. So which means we are going to take an array, instead of displaying it as an unordered list, we're just going to display it maybe as a comma separated list or separate each of the value in a new line. I don't know, depending. So let's see how we're going to write this simple function. Going to comment at this. And then we're going to write the function here, function flatting array. So this is going to take one argument, which is going to be an array. And then we're going to loop through it for each array to say as attributes and then the value. So we're going to do our check again. If value is an array, that's what we want to check again. So we're going to say if is array value. Okay, so this time instead of doing for each, we are going to call this function again. We're going to say flatten array and then pass it value. Otherwise, we are going to echo, say attribute. Okay, let's say we want to map the value to it. So attribute and value. So here, depending on how you want to display this value, you can put a line break here, or you can just put a comma. So depending on how you want to display this value. But the end result is that we are able to flatten this multi-dimensional array right to any level that we want. If you want it to become just a normal string separated by comma, you can go ahead and do that. All right. So what we need to do now is to call this function inside of our template, create a new line here, and then I'm going to call the function flatten array going to comment at this function. And then let's do a refresh. Right, so now we have name, John Doe, course software engineering, age 34, grade. Right, so we see that the array has been flattened. So if we do not want to display the attributes, so all we need to do is come here and just remove this. So at the end of the day, what we get will just be the values. But if you want this in a separate line, so what you can do is put a B arrow here. So if we do a refresh now, you can have them all on different lines. All right, so that will be all for this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture.